So I have with me Jennifer Lim, and Jennifer is a mom of two kids, Bethany and Joshua, who are three and one years old. And she's married to Jonathan Lim. And um, today I wanted to talk about something that doesn't get talked about openly um, a lot or even if at all. I mean, that topic is early infancy loss and miscarriage. Um, this is something that actually is maybe more common than we think, um, but because of the nature of what it entails, it's often a very private journey that families and couples go through because it happens before that announcement is made, which is, you know, we're pregnant. And a lot of um, miscarriages happen before or during that first trimester within the first 12 weeks. And that's why um, we may not hear of it from families who have actually gone through it. So um, I thank you for um, being willing to talk about this with me. And um, can you just share a little bit about your experience with um, miscarriages and give us a little background information of um, what you and John have gone through? Okay, so just um, a little bit about our miscarriages. So we had, we or I've had three miscarriages and two live births, um, meaning two children are alive and well today. And then, um, yeah, so the first miscarriage we had was in our first year of marriage. And then the second happened um, maybe a year after our oldest was born. And then the, the third happened about two months ago in um, February of this year. Mm -hmm. um, the first one, I miscarried in the hospital. And then the second and third, I was able to like miscarry at home. I see. Okay. Um, so pretty much before you had both your, your children, you had to go through a miscarriage. Um, one before Bethany and then one before Joshua and then one after Joshua. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's, it's not just a miscarriage that you've gone through, but for those who haven't had a miscarriage before, it's basically um, considered like a, a type of loss. You lost um, a life that you never even got to, to meet. Was this an experience that you and John had shared with other people while it was happening? Or was it something that um, you didn't really tell people about because, you know, you didn't make that announcement yet? Hmm. I'm trying to think. Um, so the first time, you know, we when um, I got pregnant, we kind of told people earlier because for some reason, I just like didn't even think that I was going to have a miscarriage. Like I was a hundred percent thinking we're going to have the real thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think I, I, no one really talked to me about miscarriages when I was pregnant. I mean, no one really would say anything about that because they don't want to dampen, yeah. you know, your Yes. Um, so that's why it like just came as a shock when it actually happened because I, I didn't even know what was happening and or even like the statistics or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, we had already told people that we were pregnant. So then when we miscarried, then we, you know, within a couple of days also just, uh, well, actually, no, we shared with at least like our close family members um, right away, like what was going on when it was happening. Yeah. And then also I feel like we just, um, just like shared with people early on, which I kind of feel like I wish I had waited a little longer because I, I didn't feel like I was ready yet to, I guess, I was just very emotional and sensitive during that that first month and mm. yeah I just I didn't even realize like how 
like I guess triggering everything was to me right right the second and third time that we had the miscarriage I felt like it was a very different experience like with yeah sharing I, I felt like the first time it was such a different experience and then right. the second and third time when we did share with people I felt like I just I was more careful about you know when I was ready to share like I just knew more of like how I was feeling and and when we were ready to share those things I think I was just more okay with sharing um right. early, but with the second and third one right that makes sense mm-hmm um, so yeah, can you share a little bit about um, the loss of these babies that you never really got to see into full term and meet? So what did what? How have you processed um, the experience of the loss? Um. Well, in terms of the loss and what they meant to me, I think, um, you know obviously it meant a lot like you know um I was just thinking about this question and how when I was younger you know people used to ask you you know what are your career ambitions and things like that like I never had any other career ambitions except like to be a mom and Aww. family mm-hmm. kind of and so when you know that was about to become a reality um you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of dreams and hopes that you, you have like for that child. And then also exactly. family, it's kind of just like a, a new season of life that you're about to like spring into. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so I just feel like, you know, yes, you lose this precious baby and, and also just all these things that you like dreamt for that baby Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and family um yeah yeah I think that um yeah it was definitely difficult like I said before the first miscarriage was harder because you don't even um there's just a lot of more uncertainties you know you Mm -hmm. start out like you know is it me or is it us? Is there the chance of like infertility or things like that? Right, right. And actually have a child at that point. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. there's just a lot of uncertainties, I think. Um, Yeah. I don't know if you asked the question about dealing with sorrow and grief. Um, yeah, how how did you um, deal with the the grieving the grieving part? Um, yeah, how did you deal with the grieving part of this? I think definitely like the first time, it was a whirlwind of emotions. Like I don't even know how to describe it really because there's a lot of emotions that I felt that I don't normally feel so extremely. Um, Mm -hmm. Like it was really like deep sadness. I would even say, you know, for a time it was like, I felt really depressed, like for a month, Mm -hmm. like happened. Actually, initially I felt like I was just numb. Like I I was kind of disbelief that or in denial about what happened. Yeah. Yeah mostly in denial, I feel like, like, you know, I, I, I just couldn't believe, I, I still, like, had hope that even, even though, you know, after, you know, the hospital and everything happened, like, I still had the hope that the baby could have been, could have survived or something, but, um, and then I felt like there was a time where I was really, I was, I was angry sometimes, like, towards God about, like, what happened, and, um, yeah, and just, like, mostly, like, numb, anger, depression, um, which is, like, not normal, 
for me. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Quite opposite, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was because like I like I felt like I was just so out of control, like with my emotions. Like I like I couldn't do anything about it. I felt very out of control. Was this something that um, you and John were able to process together? Mm. Um, yes, I think so. Like as time went on, um, you know, we, we were able to have those conversations initially was just mostly me crying a lot and there wasn't much conversation until I, I feel like I was at a point just like, you know, when I talked about like being angry towards God, I felt like there was a part of me also like searching for answers about the situation. And um, I think just like finding meaning to the situation, you know, like why, yeah. why this kind of thing to happen? And is there any good to it? Mm you know, in the grand scheme of God's plans, like, how is this good? How is this painful experience supposed to give God glory? Ultimately, if you couldn't have controlled a thing about it, then what good will come out of it? Is it, is this Mm -hmm. suffering going to be worth anything at the Mm -hmm. end? Mm -hmm. And what Mm -hmm. did you find in your search for those? questions hmm. um well there's a time where you know I, I would google a lot of things from time to time um just like whenever I when I had questions um one of one specific question that I looked up was um whether babies go to heaven when they die. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, people say, you know, babies go to heaven, all the, um, yeah, they say babies go to heaven and they don't really tell you like why or how do they know that? Mm -hmm. Um, That to me, you know, was really important because, you know, it was kind of like, if they, if they do go to heaven, you know, that means that they're with God, you know, that Mm -hmm. they, the best, you know, they don't have to live this life. They get to be with God instantly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for us, you know, we always pray for the salvation of our children. And I don't know, for some reason, I guess it just gave me a lot of peace in searching or I guess seeking those answers I don't know if I should go into a little more about like what I've learned in that process um but I think there was because I think in the bible it doesn't like directly say like babies go to heaven you know but I think there is like indirect evidence you know what you can gather from scripture that you know makes me believe that they do, you know, and it's very consistent with God's character, you know, God, our God is a God of mercy, um, and the fact that, like, he loves the little children, you know, even more than we do, you know, Mm -hmm. and just also verses that talk about, like, accountability, and, you know, for example, like, the Pharisees, you know, they, Okay, before I, I, I keep rambling on and on. <laughs> Basically, the idea that, like, you know, we're guilty because Jesus says that we see, uh, like, we've heard the gospel, but, like, we don't respond. But, like, mm-hmm. these Christians, they, have, they aren't able to understand. So, like, how can they be held accountable? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, And then also there's a verse about like David and his um, unborn baby. Um, Mm. 
and basically saying, uh, I have it here, it says 2 Samuel 12, 23, but now he is dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. Um, and that to me was also, you know, kind of indirect evidence, like, what does that mean that he's going to go to him kind of thing? Like, um, yeah. Uh, why is this important? <laughs> because I guess I think that like, uh, yeah, just like coming to the conclusion that babies do go, or are unborn children do go to heaven is like, for me, it was an answered prayer. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I need to raise them and everything. But like at the end of the day, like what I really want my children is to be with God for all right. the, without sin, without, you know, right. Uh, having they, to live. They bypass the, they went the fast route. <laughs> yeah. Bypassed earth, the, the sufferings, the exposure of sin, and they only knew of God and his existence. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, like I believe that they're, you know, because of that, you know, they praise God, and I praise God for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, just seeing how like God can make good out of the situation that's not good, you know. Right, and and if you think about why or how could you be sad, what where does the sadness come from? It's the loss that you get, you miss the opportunity to meet them on earth. Mm, mm -hmm. um, I think that's where the, the sorrow and the sadness and the pain comes from because you don't get to have it your way. Um, but exactly. you, get, you have to wait ex longer <laughs> to meet that child that you had dreamt for. I think that that is definitely something that... Um, can only highlight God as the creator. And it, it kind of gives you a spiritual um, reality, um, a spiritual taste, a reminder that like we are living on this earth, which is such a temporary thing in light of eternity. And um, I think that's one of the blessings that come from this journey of having a miscarriage if you really put your hope that this child is now in heaven, celebrating um, his or her father, worshiping up there, and it gives you that eternal longing that you know, I, I, I long to meet my child one day, and I long to for Jesus to return. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think it is so true what you said about, you know, it's it's not it's more so like our or my dreams or our dreams for our family, maybe. Yeah. Right. Um, went away. Yes. Or, um, but I think that through that process, it just makes me, uh, I describe it, I guess, just like what you said, like life is so precious it just brings you back down to reality that like there's a spiritual world and we're, we're going to be living in this life for so long. It, I think just like whenever you encounter loss or death, like you're just reminded every day, you know, we're sustained by God. Like, yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so does it matter? Like sometimes it, it might not matter what you're planning for the future because, yeah. you know, we shouldn't be living for this here on earth, but like eternity in heaven. Yeah. Loss is a, it's a painful reminder of that reality, but it's, it's a reminder nonetheless. I think another thing I wanted to add was it also gave me a newer perspective like about the gospel especially you know the loss of a child like when you think of the gospel as well you know like we would never like give up our child 
for anything. We don't even want them to die, like, yeah, like, um, just through natural causes. Right. But to think about, you know, how God, who was with Jesus for all eternity, and, you know, because um, he wanted to save people, like, not even people that were necessarily his friends, like, you know, God gave up his only son for people that, like, were his enemies, like, people who hated him, mm -hmm. so that was just, like, something um, that made me so amazed. Yeah. Like, wow, you know. Because you felt it, like you could begin to understand that kind of loss of like the father's giving of his son <laughs> like the pain the the sadness the grief of um yeah giving up your only son mm -hmm. like multiple children it was like his only son and yeah. i don't think god was happy to give up his son either he was not but he did so in order to save us um, yeah. so yeah it was just this realization that you know God really loves us and um, yeah not only um, yeah I, yeah like that God really loves us and that he is, you know, he understands our suffering, like through the loss of children. Yes. What kind of comfort or encouragement or support would you offer um, families going through the similar experience? You know, I think that it's, it's a very cliche thing to say, but it's, also true that you know prayer is just something that's so important because um you know you just don't know you know how people are grieving like my experience was my experience but someone else could you know grieve in a different way and i think that they just need the lord to meet them where they're at you know like for example for me you know i was seeking answers and he was able to meet me there yeah uh, in that same way you know you don't know what exactly people are thinking you just pray that god would meet them wherever they're at um also just because it's a very sensitive time like for me i didn't always really want to talk um and that's like not like me because normally i do want to talk a lot but um yeah during this time like I just didn't want to really talk to people um so I think just like offering a listening ear you know just being there for them when they when they need it in their time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah like I feel like I wouldn't say a ton to a person going through it and just you know, if you've gone through it, just letting them know, like, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, but if you haven't gone through it, just, like, yeah, just offering them prayer. Mm -hmm. Maybe even, like, support through physical means, like, sending a meal or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are all good ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for sharing those. Um, my last question for you is, have you found peace for your three miscarriages? Yes, I would say that I have peace about it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's always like the initial sadness and grief mm -hmm. from the loss, but mm -hmm. especially after what I went through the first time around, um, you know, the, just those things, those truths I just kind of carried on with me through the, the next times that I experienced miscarriages. And 
Um, I mean, it's still hard initially, but like every time that it's happened, there's at some point, you know, um, yeah, there's, I've been, ex I've experienced peace at some point, um, just through God's word and, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, Praise God, because I think that means that you have also come to a place of surrender um, and not wrestling anymore, not questioning and just accepting that this was God's will. Well, I'm just going to read from Psalm 139, and I think this is such an excellent chapter to meditate on when you're pregnant and even for the rest of your life to just imagine that there is no accident when it comes to God forming life. So Psalm 139, starting from verse 13, for you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I could count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. And I think that in these verses alone, it just shows God's sovereign hand and his, the, the hand of our creator that has ordained everything perfectly under his will, which is good and perfect. And there is no mistake, including the number of days that we get on earth. There's nobody knows what mm -hmm. that number is until the day our, our last one comes. So I think that that is just one of the promises we hold on to that every life will have its completion and God will be glorified for it. And even the lives that we never got to meet, I feel like the legacy of those lives continue to shape those who had hoped in those lives and had you had probably known them most intimately as their their mother. And I, I just think that... Um, yeah, that in its own way gives the Father glory as mm -hmm. he can use life to transform us and draw us closer to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I did have that verse too. And that was actually one of the also uh, pivotal verses in my uh, whether babies go to heaven kind of uh, research. Because I was like, God knitted together knitted us together in our mother's womb so like how can this how can god not like think of this person that he knitted together like if he's going to create them from the moment of conception like he's going to carry them all the way to the end kind of thing yeah yeah all of life is in his hands and that is we are inescapable like we can't escape him <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to me, I felt like, wow, that just also made me realize, like, how God is, like, so near to us. Like, I mean, it, it's weird to say that God is so involved because, I mean, he's literally, like, within us as a yeah. holy is within us. Yeah. Um, sometimes you kind of just forget those things, like, just how, how near God is. But... Um, yeah, I think just the idea that, like, he, yeah, uh, I don't even know what else to say, but that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again, Jen. I really appreciate you, and um, I'm glad that you were able to share your experience with me and with the rest of us. <laughs> uh -huh.